Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're talking ignition coil connectors. So this is the connector housing for ignition coils specifically on 2.0T TSI engines, but this actually applies to all Volkswagen and Audi ignition coil connectors that are coil on plug. And we'll get into what that means in just a second. Before we get into the show, we'll talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen and Audi parts experts. Awesome service, great pricing, a ton of really great DIY videos, a few related to what we're gonna talk about today. I'll be sure to put a link in the show notes for those DIYs, as well as to shopdap.com. All right, on the surface, this may seem like a really easy kind of no-brainer how parts fail video, but there's a lot going on and a lot to ignition coil connectors and Volkswagen Audi connectors in general. And this is actually one of the most broken connectors I've seen in my career on a Volkswagen. Ignition coil connectors and airflow meter connectors are definitely the top two broken connectors I've seen in my career. Okay, this connector is what provides the electrical connection from the ECM to the ignition coil. The ignition coil is what actually fires the spark plug. I have this ignition coil saved to do a parts failure video on it in the future, so we're not gonna get too deep into how these fail, but we're specifically talking about the connection between the two. I mentioned the words coil on plug, and what that means is the ignition coil sits directly on top of the spark plug instead of a vehicle that has something like a distributor or a coil pack and spark plug wires. So this basically puts the ignition coil and spark plug wire in one unit. And Volkswagen has had more of their fair share of failures on these. Now let's talk a little bit about what makes an ignition coil or any Volkswagen connector. Now this will apply to most Audi and Volkswagen connectors, be it ignition coil or anything else. First you have the body of the connector. And on one side or both, it'll show you how many pins are in the connector. You have the lock. This is the piece that clips inside to lock it into the component that it's plugging into. You have the pins, which are the wires you can see here. You have two different seals. You have a seal on the inside that's orange, as well as seals where the wires are. You have a secondary lock, which is the purple piece on the inside, and you have a primary lock, which is actually located on the wire pin itself. Here is the secondary lock. You can see the purple piece there as well as the orange seal inside of the connector housing. So how do these connectors fail? Well, a little bit about why they fail so often is their location. These are located right on the very top of the engine, so they're constantly exposed to heat. In addition to that, they have a cover on the top of them that stores even more heat. So when they get hot, they get brittle. Then you also have to throw in the fact that spark plugs are a maintenance item, so these connectors are going to be taken on and off a lot. So here's what it looks like when the ignition coil is plugged into the coil pack. Typically what happens is someone will grab the tab and pull it back and then pull the connector apart. So this failure is not always caused by someone just plain being careless. I've actually broken these connectors and I'm really careful when I disconnect Volkswagen connectors. While the broken lock tab is the most common way they fail, it's not the only way they can fail. You can have a seal that tears and allows moisture inside of the connector housing. You can also have a bad wire connection that could be caused by either, again, moisture getting in or someone not properly plugging in the connector. So is replacing one of these connectors a DIY? Well, it very well may be. The easiest way to DIY one of these is to have a little pigtail like this where you can make just four splices. You can also de-pin the entire connector, which does require a special tool in order to remove the pins without damaging either the connector housing or the pins themselves. And if we've broken the connector, damaging the pins is clearly more important than damaging the housing. I have here a series of Volkswagen special tools specifically built to remove pins from various connectors. These things work fantastic. There are also a few aftermarket solutions that work pretty well. And if all else fails, you can actually make these yourself. What I generally do is take a wiper blade, pull the metal rod out of it, bend it, and then cut it down so that it mirrors one of these wire pin tools. And actually, there's a few connectors that I've ran into where that works better than these Volkswagen special tools. These things are crazy expensive. They're like $55 a piece. And if worse comes to worse and you've already broken the connector, if you're very careful, you can actually just break the rest of the housing and pull the wires out. As always, I recommend writing down what color wires are in what location or taking a picture of it so that they go back in the proper spot. A few tips to working with these connectors without breaking them. I usually use a little power lube or something just to get some lubricant inside the connector housing so that I can pull it apart. And you wanna make sure you clean any of that off before you plug it back in. The biggest tip that I have is before you even start to take the connector off, push the two connectors together, 
then pull the tab, then pull them apart. That'll ensure that the lock release is not caught on the little tab of the connector. If none of those things work, you can take a small pick, which is kind of the opposite of what I have here, and go underneath the connector and release it that way. You only wanna do this as a last resort because the odds of breaking the connector doing it that way are quite a bit higher. So how do you know you may have a damaged connector? Well, a lot of times you can see that the lock tab is broken or the connector won't stay connected. When you're plugging these in though, you wanna make sure that when you do that, you hear the distinct click of the connector locking. Otherwise it is not fully seated. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any connector questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you liked the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right guys, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. And I don't have a beer of the day because it's like nine in the morning today. I've repinned so many of these.